Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Maria Sorreo. Budget talks are underway in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Mayor Susan Brooks discussed the proposed 2013-2014 budget with Liz Brown Swanson and gave us this update. What portion of your property tax dollar actually goes into Rancho Palos Verdes operations? It's 6% of this dollar, which is actually before the one in the $1. Um, 45% is going into some type of educational program, whether it's the school district uh, educational augmentation funds that were taken from cities and counties through the state. Um, and also there's 3% coming out of the library district funding, 24% for Los Angeles County. We get a lot of bang for the buck. You said though we might be getting some more property tax revenue coming in. We got an increase on that area? Yes, it looks like we'll have about a 2% increase in uh, property tax revenues as a result of increased sales, home sales, and additions to homes. Um, so that looks very good. So when you look at the budget the city um, works with to do all the things that they do, are you feeling it's adequate? Is it meeting the expectations and the needs of the city in terms of all the things you need to provide our, our residents? Well, the city has always had a philosophy of exercising fiscal prudence. And in that capacity, we clearly have done that. What we've also done over the last 40 years is we're celebrating our 40th anniversary is we've increased the level of services due to the level of demand. And we, we have gone um, from being a very um, small scale, bare bones community to a world class resort community in those 40 years. So that is a big stride, but we maintain a very modest budget for that. Right now for the next year, calls for $24.7 million um, as a general fund budget and in our general operating fund. The only cut areas is that the, the council did agree to do as other area um, cities have done, which is they do that eventually we plan to phase out the, it, it's a, there, there's $50,000 that was allocated as a placeholder for grants to nonprofit organizations, but um, the council did vote and with the uh, abstention of only Councilman Campbell, um, we did vote to phase out this program within two years and to limit the amount and reduce the amount because um, the FAC committee, the Financial Advisory Committee, among um, many others, uh, and common sense <laughs> to a large degree will tell you that it is not the philosophical role of the city to be playing, um, handing out taxpayer funds from the general fund uh, to nonprofits of our choice, that that's something we encourage people, and I myself do, and my other right. colleagues do as well, but no other peninsula city has it, and other area cities um, use community development block grant monies or Quimby funds, which are not available to us, um, and if they do have some general project, that would be something special. For more on the budget and city issues, you can watch every city council meeting right here on RPV TV and go to the city's website at palosverdes.com slash RPV. LA County Sheriff's officials are warning residents that it's rattlesnake season and people and pets are being bit. Poisonous rattlesnakes are easy to identify by their triangular heads and tail rattles. Authorities say if the worst happens and you are bitten, stay calm and seek medical attention immediately to remove the venom. Officials offer these tips to keep the public safe. First, if you see a snake, step away from it and don't touch it. Hikers in brush are advised to wear long, loose pants and always carry a cell phone. Second, if you see a rattlesnake on your property, call the LA County Animal Control. Third, take steps to keep snakes off of your property. Eliminate places they hide like wood piles and control rodents that are their food source. Always keep your trash covered and snake-proof fencing can be installed to offer extra protection. The California Poison Control Center reports there are 800 rattlesnake bites each year with only one or two deaths. It's that time of year again when the community comes together to support cancer patients and their loved ones. On Sunday, June 23rd, the Cancer Support Community Redondo Beach will host the 17th annual Celebrate Wellness Fundraiser at the South Coast Botanic Garden.
Liz Brown Swanson joins us now with all the details. Liz. Hi, Marie. I'm here at Cancer Support Community Redondo Beach, located at the Redondo Beach Pier. For 26 years, the Cancer Support Community has offered so much help to cancer patients and their loved ones. Here's more on this incredible nonprofit organization and their upcoming fundraising event. We are here for anybody who's affected by cancer. We offer over 150 free programs per month and we have everything from support groups, which is the core of what we do, to networking groups, um, exercise programs, uh, workshops where doctors come and speak, and everything's free. It's just a, it's a wonderful resource for anybody who has cancer. I've been diagnosed with cancer about six years ago and was lucky enough that all I had to have was surgery removed all the cancer. I didn't have to have any chemo or radiation treatments or anything like that. I found a lot of help here, a lot of support from the other members, the people that uh, share my cancer with me, from the coordinators, and all the people that have been here have been just marvelous. We started a children's program um, about a year ago that's been very successful. It's our kids' community, and it's, it's a wonderful program. Um, we offer it uh, a group once a month for kids, and then we have play activities for children from 5 to 12 who um, have been affected by cancer, who have a parent or a sibling or a close friend with cancer. My mom got diagnosed with cancer, and we started getting really depressed, so my mom put us in the care to, you know, kind of get her off our hands. Came here to, like, say that we're not the only ones here. And so it was actually nice, like, interacting with the people who had cancer, uh, who, whose parents had cancer and stuff like that. I saw that my kids needed help as well, uh, especially my son, because he was older at the time I was diagnosed. And um, somebody from here called and said, hey, we're going to start a, a kids group. And I said, sign us up, because we need it. My kids need it just as much as I do. All of our funding comes from grants and donations from the community, and of course our five events a year. We have a, our signature event coming up um, June 23rd, Celebrate Wellness, and um, it's at the South Coast Botanic Gardens. We have over 40 restaurants and wineries that'll come to pass out tastes. We have over 300 items in our silent auction and um, entertainment and a live auction as well. We'll give you an opportunity to um, shop all the way through our silent auction, and then our program will begin. We, of course, will give the, the history of the work that we do and tell you a little bit more about the people that we serve. Last year alone, we had um, 1,400 individual cancer patients that came through here um, for our services. The truth is that cancer isn't a death sentence, and there are probably close to 13 million people in the United States that are cancer survivors and more survivors every day because cancer treatment has changed. What's great is that if you're around people who are going through the cancer experience, that in itself creates hope and uh, positive feelings about the possibilities uh, with cancer. Now, if you want more information about the Cancer Support Community, you can check out their website at cancersupportredondobeach.org. And we hope to see everyone at that upcoming event on June 23rd. Thanks, Liz, for reporting on this very important cause. And we want to remind everyone again that the Celebrate Wellness event is at the South Coast Botanic Garden on Sunday, June 23rd. And coming up next, meet some very special volunteers who make a difference at our local library. And it was lots of fun and, of course, funnel cake at the Palos Verde Street Fair. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of traffic safety near our schools. School zones are always 25 miles per hour. The school zone only applies when students are outside the school in the morning and the afternoon. Parents should always allow extra time when dropping off their children and should know the school's drop-off routes and procedures. Motorists should also focus on safe driving near schools. Some of the violations I see near schools are cell phones, speeding, double parking, seat belts, and child safety seats. Students should always remember to cross safely at intersections and not to run out in front of cars. When we follow these rules, we can all stay safe.
Well, it's an event that everyone in the community came out for, and this year was no exception. The Palos Verdes Street Fair and Music Festival was bigger and better than ever. From the dog show to some of the best local bands, and of course there was that food. And we were there for all the fun. Maria, once again, everyone had a great time at the street fair hosted by the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. Let's go check out the fun and the funnel cake. We love the TV street fair! We are just having the most awesome time. It's phenomenal. We had great crowds yesterday. The bands were getting standing ovations. We had people from little toddlers through grandparents out there dancing. The feeling of community and family was unbelievable. The carnival has been jam-packed. We have 200 artisans and vendors here with the most incredible, unique artwork and things to sell. It's wonderful. So, And the local kids are performing on the community stage, so we're having a great time. We couldn't do this without our sponsors and, of course, our chamber members and our volunteers. So I'll start with our sponsors. We have right behind us DCH Toyota and Scion of Torrance and DC it's Gardena Honda and they have just been knocking it out of the park. This is the, one of the best street fairs around. There's so many great shopping experiences but also the fun carnival. I mean it all comes together in a great experience. I mean, we come annually. It's like one of our things. We've been best friends since high school so we come every year together. <laughs> we just want a goldfish from this little fair attraction and that was really fun. all fun and games, it is also the biggest fundraiser for the Chamber of Commerce. The estimated about 40,000 people came to the street fair this year. Back to you, Maria. Congratulations go out to some very special volunteers who have donated thousands of hours to the Palos Verdes Library District. These volunteers were recognized at a luncheon hosted by the Peninsula Friends of the Library. Liz Brown Swanson was at the event and joins us now. Liz. Today I'm at the PV Golf Club and behind me is a room filled with community volunteers. They give their time and talent to the Palos Verdes Library District and many of them are being honored today. We have about 200 volunteers at the library and we are so very, very pleased and proud and appreciative of them. And so um, they work for the library and we are the Friends of the Library, which is sort of two different organizations. But this luncheon today is sponsored by the Friends. We pay for the whole thing as showing our appreciation to all these volunteers who put in thousands of hours. Everybody who's um, here today um, is a volunteer, but we have five people who've given um, cumulatively over their volunteer service over 10,000 hours each. Um, and one of them, Gene Roeder, is uh, closing in on 20,000 hours of his time. That's like 10 years of full-time employment. I was used to going to the book sales up here because I'm an avid reader and got talking to a couple of the volunteers at the book sale and uh, that's how I got started. They said they could use some help. I started uh, working a, a few hours a week and moved up to working six days a week. Both being honored as volunteers for all you do, talk about your passion, why you volunteer so much for the libraries. Well, we are both passionate readers and when John retired, we were looking for something to fill our spare time. What are some of the things you enjoy doing, John, as a volunteer? I think it's the group of people we work with. We. Uh, we are co-managers in the book sale, along with Nell Merrills. We have about 45 people working with us, and they are 45 very wonderful people, I would say. I was on the Rolling Hills Estate City Council, and I retired. And the Friends of the Library needed a president. I said, sure, and that's how I got involved in the first place. How many hours do you think you dedicate to the library district now? Well, a week, I would say... Um, 20. I think I work about half time. You've been volunteering now for 20 years. What do you love so much about volunteering with the libraries? The people. I like the library. 
I like, these are all my friends sitting here today. It's my life right now. It's my life. And again, big congratulations to all the volunteers honored today. And if you want to get involved with the library, just go to their website at pvld.org. Thanks, Liz. It was a night of music and magic at Trump National at the annual fundraiser for the local charity Freedom For You. I had a chance to catch up with the founder of Freedom For You, Dr. Greg Allen, who talks about the importance of keeping our youth on the right path. Well, our programs are in the areas of creative arts, life skills, leadership, and service. Okay. So we involve uh, junior high and high school kids in all those areas, everything from performing, to leading, to planning, to uh, events, safe supervised activities we have for teenagers, Friday night, Saturday night things. We uh, share the teen annex with the library district, so kids are there as an after school place. And then we also put counselors in, in the schools, in the public schools. So we have uh, counselors in all the public schools here in Palos Verdes, as well as Redondo and Maricosta. And they help the kids that are really struggling. So the they see them on campus, there are counselors to help them seems like everybody sort of thinks that this this area wouldn't need that, but it's just the opposite of that. The more affluent areas, actually, the kids get in more trouble, <laughs> and, they, and there's kind of there's different different challenges, but the kids are still at risk in their free time and the choices they make and, and the stress that they're faced with. And then really what happens when you have a lot of stress and high performance as a target is you you get unhealthy coping skills. And so you get a lot of alcohol use, a lot of drug use, and a lot of, uh, you know, over-adventurous things they try to do. So we, what we do with the kid is try to pull out of them what their interest is, what their passion is. So we don't say, here's the thing, you do this. It's like, what are you interested in? What do you want to do one day? What do you like? And then try to expose them to that and s see if that'll you know, ignite a fire inside them. And then it, when you find what you like to do, you enjoy doing it and you just go after it. So then it's uh, easy to fulfill that, you know, that desire. If you would like more information on Freedom For You, you can go to freedomcommunity.org. And local teenagers are making a difference with a group called Ride to Fly. The teens formed their own nonprofit, the Bella Foundation, which provides photos of children and adults who participate in Ride to Fly. With more on the story, here is Annalise Snowhook. I am very, very fond of horses, and uh, photography is a hobby, and I have a lot of disabled relatives and friends. And I found Ride to Fly, and it really, really spoke to me, and that's how we got involved. So far, we're taking uh, portraits of the clients and framing them, printing, printing them out, framing them, and giving them back to the, the client. Uh, just take a quality portrait for free, and it really strengthens the bond between horse and rider. Yeah, because nowadays it's just kind of like you have to do community service for school, so you sign up as a volunteer someplace, you do it for like two hours, and you're like, all right, got my community service done. I stood in the back and then like passed out snacks or, you know, like painted a door or something, and I mean, it, it is very helpful. Anything you can do is very helpful, but we just had, we thought it'd be fun to try and make our own foundation. We all came together and we wanted to make a difference and um, make an impact in our community. If you're interested in us, uh, we, you can go to our website. It's uh, bellafdn.org and we have more information and we're always looking for donations. The teenage directors of the foundation take turns designing and leading projects like their current one with Ride to Fly. Ride to Fly is a therapeutic horseback riding program for the mentally and physically challenged. And today you will see uh, children riding. Uh, we always have sidewalkers and a leader with them, unless they have become independent riders. And then we will have volunteers stationed around the arena just for safety purposes. The children get into your heart. And you take everyone home with you. And to see them progress, to become more social, to become stronger. We take children that can't really sit yet, and we put a pillow in front of them, and they bend over. To see them sit straight, mm -hmm. and to see them just bloom. I love it. <laughs> Step up and over with this one. Up! Wow, just like the Cowboys. Oh, good, good job, Capono. 
When you're Donald Trump, finding time to get a round of golf in is no easy task. But when that golf course is Trump National, you manage to find a way to squeeze it in your very busy schedule. I had a chance to sit down with Mr. Donald Trump, who talks candidly about the evolution of the golf course from that 18th hole falling into the Pacific to making the course one of the most sought after courses in the world to play. Mr. Trump, I want to go back just a few years to when you actually bought this property from the Zuckerman Brothers and of course beautiful golf course with just one little glitch and that was the 18th hole. Right. Talk about that undertaking and taking the most expensive 18th hole in golf history. Well it is. The hole was like 61 million dollars and it's probably the most expensive course ever built. I wouldn't say that I spent so much money on it but people did and insurance companies and it was tied up for many years because the 18th hole as you remember fell into the Pacific. That's Right. Yep. And I, that actually gave me the opportunity to come in and I was able to buy it from the banks after that and it's become just a tremendous success. It's now rated the best course in the state of California. We're rated number one. You see it all over the clubhouse and it's, it really is. It's the best course. It's considered better than Pebble Beach, better than any of the courses in California. I also spent a tremendous amount of money bringing it to a level because when I bought it, it was a good course in a great location. Right and you still had the ocean, but you didn't have the ocean like you have it now because right. we made the vistas much bigger and the course is a much bigger course. Uh, Pete Dye was the architect yeah. and he did a fantastic job. Every single hole is either on the ocean or a view of the ocean and there's no course like that in California. I mean, that's why we got rated better than Pebble Beach, better than any of the great courses. And if you think of Pebble Beach, they have six holes that are on the water. We have all 18 are essentially on the water or absolutely on the water. We have a fantastic, uh, the staff and the chef and and the food and everything else. We really have great people and I hear it all the time. I mean they talk about the greens are wonderful and the course is wonderful and they love the clubhouse but people talk about the great help and the people that yeah. work here whether it's Lily or any of the other people, the chef who we think is just the best and they love the food, they love the ambiance but they do love the people. I know you mentioned if there's ever an earthquake you want to be standing on the 18th hole because it'll be safe for everybody. <laughs> well it's true. I did mention, I didn't know you did so much research. That's true. I actually say if there's ever an earthquake I want to be standing on the 18th because when we rebuilt it it's so structuralized and so incredible what we were right. forced to do and I said you know the world may move but that hole is staying it's right, staying where, right it's, where it is. It's a very solid hole. You know it's been a, a tremendous amount of work. Uh, the town recently or the city has been really spectacular. I mean they want this to be the best. They're very proud of it. Yes. And we appreciate that and we've really had a great relationship with them. Baseball begins for many players in Little League, and since many kids out there have challenges to overcome, there is a league right here in Rancho Palos Verdes that accommodates their special needs. Challengers Baseball wrapped up their season, and we were there for all the fun and, of course, those trophies. This program is just growing and growing. Yeah, we couldn't be happier. First year we'd had uh, 20, 25 kids, and this year we're serving 45, 47 kids in the group. It's fantastic. Well, we spread the words out to all the local schools who are on the special ed schools, and then we also work with the Friendship Circle, uh, who brings us a lot of kids. We get kids coming from San Pedro, Long Beach, Hawthorne, all over the place. Now, how do you find the buddies? Our buddies are usually high school volunteers, middle school volunteers who are in the volunteer organizations, and, and they're just terrific. We've got probably 100 buddies that sort of circulate through, and they're all great. Well, and the great thing here is everybody succeeds. Every one of these kids are champions, and, and we love them all, and they all succeed. They all get to hit, they all get to throw, they all get to run, have a great time in the sunshine. That's what baseball is all about. There are no limitations here. Everybody's out here having a great time. So we start in April of every year. It coincides with our little league season here at Lanata Bay, and uh, and and it runs till really this first week of June. And uh, so we play about 15 games, and and we also travel to the different four different little leagues in the hill. So the, everybody gets to participate, and the other leagues are terrific. They all really get up for it and we'll get lots of people there to cheer the kids on. How long have you been a helper with the Challengers? I've been doing this for quite a few years, maybe three to four years I've been helping. How about you? Yeah, like one or two years. You know, you are a very good hitter. We were watching you out there. Really? Uh, yeah. Are you, <laughs> now, are your buddies helping you out today? Yeah. Are they doing a good job? Yes. Just to come out here and see the smile on their faces really kind of brightens up your day and just means a lot to them, means a lot to us, too. What do you think you've learned the most from being out here with the kids? It's a good thing to like understand that not everyone's like made the same way. Kind of like a good way to give back. What's your favorite part of the whole thing? 
I like playing catch. So how about for you? I like playing catch with him too. He's really good at it. He can throw so far. Now, what you're you're teaching him a lot. What is he teaching you? I don't know. He's just he always has a great attitude and he loves to talk about just his family. He talked about uh, how he used to visit his grandma in Santa Barbara. Now today is trophy day. Talk about that. So every one of our kids gets a trophy. Everybody's a champion today and so we'll be handing those out shortly and the kids, this is probably the highlight of the year. They've all been coming up and saying, we getting trophies today, coach? We getting trophies? They go, you bet. We got your trophies for you. They love it with their name on it. It's a big deal. Parents like myself who have special needs kids, it's very hard to find these kind of uh, activities and it's amazing how a community like this uh, uh, that the Little League offers the uh, program and uh, also does it uh, free of charge and people like Bill who put it together who had typical kids and high pressure jobs, the time and effort that they uh, put into such a well organized program is uh, wonderful. Dodgers, ready? One, two, three, And finally, have you made plans for the 4th of July? Because the city of Rancho Palos Verdes has a celebration that you will not want to miss. That's right, come on down to City Hall for a day of fun. It starts at 10 a.m. and it's a free event. Now we will have live entertainment, food, shopping, a petting zoo, and lots of fun rides for the kids. So come on out and join the celebration. We'll be there, we hope you will too. And that will do it for us from everyone here at RPV TV. Make it a great day.